One of the key elements of Genshin Impact's gameplay is building characters so that they're stronger. There are three main elements of this part of the game. Weapons, talents, and most important of all, artifacts. If you don't have good artifacts, you're basically not guaranteed to deal any kind of good damage without a lot of buffs. With that being considered, who would be dumb enough to even play Genshin without artifacts? <sighs> Fine, I'll do it. Here are the rules. I cannot use any artifacts on characters at any point. Any trial characters that have artifacts are not allowed. And I cannot use buffing food. Once again, most of this playthrough was streamed on YouTube, except for Samaru. And for anybody who wonders when I'm going to return to streaming, that might be a while. Now let's see if you can beat Genshin Impact using absolutely no artifacts. We have to do all the early game stuff like pick the Traveler, get Animo, find the dog, get Amber, take out the Hilly Trolls, which was obviously easy, get our Winged Glider, get attacked by Devalin, take him down, then go to the Knights of Aphonia's headquarters where we unlock Wishing. And since I'm a gambling man, I decided to do my first 10 pull on not Noel Banner, and instead on Standard Banner. That delay, I think that means we're getting a character. I saw a little bit of delay. Blood Tainted Greatsword. Who called it? <laughs> who called it? If you're wondering why I said who called it, it's because somebody earlier in chat said that I was going to get Chong Yun on my first 10 pull, and they predicted perfectly. Now I have Chong Yun at the start, who I already had for character dies after every Archon quest. Alright, we just time traveled back a little bit, don't mind us. Oh. Since I don't learn, I did a 10 pull on the same banner. There was no delay. There was literally no delay. It's gonna be a weapon. I already know, it's just gonna be fucking Bobonia's Codec! I hate this game. Yes! I love this game. First of the three domains was Amber's Domain. And it's a good time to say that literally every trial character in the game has artifacts, so we're not going to be able to use any trial characters. Razor destroyed this domain, and next is Kaya's domain, which was also as easy as Amber's. And we did the skip in Lisa's domain, and we're done with Act 1. Now we have to get to Air 10 to continue to Act 2, and I did a lot of roaming around and doing random stuff for this. The Adventure Handbook is really useful this early on to get a lot of experience easy. Once we actually reach Air 10, we get a 10 pull on either Noel Banner or Standard Banner. And I'm already an idiot, so I'm gonna wish on Standard Banner again. And then we get a new character. Four star. Farazan. She is 100% a character. She is a character. Now it might sound like I'm disappointed. And I am. Farazan isn't the best character we could have gotten. Her grouping capabilities aren't really that good, and her only real use is on mono enemo teams or teams with an enemo DPS, which isn't our team. Our DPS is Razor. Either way, we'll replace Lumen with Farazan. We also get prototype Rancor for Kaya. That's where I ended day one. While off stream, I got the, all the animoculi I could. The only ones I couldn't get were the ones in Storm Terra's lair. Now it's time for Act 2 of Mondstadt. The Eye of the Storm and Wind Rise was really easy. I had also gotten Favonius Greatsword, which I tried on Razor in this fight, but his damage was lower, so I switched him back to Debate Club. We do some unmatched sneaking skills in the basement of the cathedral, and then <laughs> the Fatui hideout was really easy, even if we couldn't use D Luke. Next, we have to collect all the teardrop crystals. First, we took down the Ruin Guard, who was really easy, but did take a bit. Next, we strolled into the Hilly Troll camp and stole their teardrop crystal, and now the domain. Instead of one star weapons, where this was a point where I realized our team was not that strong and we would struggle with damage, it wasn't like that, and we destroyed it. Kaya kinda heals, but he only heals himself, and that's up. You okay, Madam Farazan? Okay. The only part that was difficult was the elevators. Watch this. No. Oh.
Now we can summon Devalin. What has been done cannot be undone. It's about drive, it's about power. We stay hungry, we devour. Put in the work, put in the hours, and take what's ours. Ra. Wait for my word. I'll be sure. I'll wait forever for your word. For Anything for Master D. Will not go unpunished. <clears throat> That's the end of Act Two, and now I have to get to AR 18 to continue to Act Three. We're already AR 15, so this won't take too long. Haven't you heard? I'm gonna get Clee. Watch. That's not Clee, but hopefully a new character. And that's what I'm talking about, Tomato. Uh, tomato. We did Kaya's story quest, Amber's story quest, Lisa's story quest, and a lot of exploring in Liyue, and that is enough to get to AR-18 very quickly. The Abyss Mage at the entrance of Storm Terror's lair was really easy because we were constantly able to proc Electro Charge and Vaporize with Razor and Toma. Toma and Razor are just a, big, a bunch of bullies. <laughs> Inside Storm Terror's lair, we have to trigger three light actuators, and only one of them requires combat, and it was easy. Diluc. Oh my god. God damn it. Razor got too much juice! The only two characters on my team that I plan on keeping for the rest of the playthrough are Toma and Razor. This song will be sung for years to come, but I have loved that song. Come! Venti said, come! Ha ha ha! Amber. <laughs> Now we can fight the Fallen. But before doing that, we collected the rest of the Animoculi we had on the map, and now we have a level 10 statue. Against the Fallen, we could have done a lot more damage than we did the first time we knocked him down, but Razor. Oh my god, Razor, you stupid idiot! If it weren't for that, we would have been able to beat him in two phases, but we had to knock him down a third time. But once we beat him, we're done with Monster Act 3. That's where I ended day 2. In between day 2 and day 3, I did a bit of grinding, and by a bit of grinding, I mean a bit of grinding. This gave us a 10 pull on event banner, so... Thankfully, I didn't have to go to hard pity for a 4 star. Hey, That's not too bad. That didn't work. Uh... Atoma Constellation. Of all things I could have gotten, Atoma Constellation. ANOTHER TOMA CONSTELLATION?! WHAT THE FUCK?! Well, I did say I was going to plan on using him for the rest of the playthrough, but WHY TWO OF HIM?! Before we start Liu at Act 1, we decided to change up the team to Barbara, Toma, Razor, and Singcho. Vector the Crocodile dies, and then we go to tell the Adepti about Vector's death. First was Mooncarver, and because of his buff, we had unlimited uptime for Razor's burst, which meant this was really easy. Can I have infinite wolves? I have infinite mo wolves, oh my god. Oh yeah, he's gonna let the beast out. Oh, get ready, get ready guys. He's gonna let the beast out. A bit more, let the beast out. And then I let the beast out for running away. I'm gonna let the beast out. Next was Mountain Shaper and all we had to do was find this guy's brother in Amber and I had to destroy all of the Amber except one of them to find him. Next, we skipped the domain for Cloud Retainer and went to meet Zhao. The Ruin Hunter in the part of the quest was really easy and barely even hit me. That's the end of Act 1. Now I have to get to AR-25, but all we had to do for that was do a little bit of exploring in Dragon's Mine, and then we were AR-25 in no time. Before I started Act 2, I decided to do the Ascension Domain and end Day 3 and start Act 2 the next day. At the end of the Ascension Domain, there was the Electro Hypostasis. It took a while to take down its HP, but gladly we could just barely take down all three of the prisms in the end. <laughs> we could clear all the prisms and win. At the start of Act 2, we meet Vector and go to boil some rocks. The hilly trolls that appear were easy, and next was the Gilf's teapot. All that was in there were just a bunch of slimes, and they were easy as well. Oh, 
hole. Next were the treasure hoarders at Guizhong Ballista, and they were also really easy. Afterwards, we get laughed at by a ginger and go to have a date with Vector. And that marks the end of Act 2, which means we have to grind to get to AR-28 to start Act 3. We have a bunch of story quests in our backlog, so we can do those to get some experience, but it'll take a bit. I did Diluc story quest, Razor story quest, and Singcho story quest, along with some exploring in Dragonspine, and that got us to AR-27. I said on stream that I would just do some daily commissions to get to AR-28, so it would be a few days before I returned to streaming. Yeah, that was a massive lie and I streamed the next day at AR-28. What I did to get to AR-28 so easily was a LOT of Dragonspine. Naturally, that gets us a lot of wishes, so we spent our wishes. Spend the primos. Another Favonius Greatsword? I said this one and I'll say it again, my parrot has beef with you, man. Wow. Never thought I'd have parrot. I've had beef with a parrot. Oh. Cauliflower? Now, despite my non reaction to Cauliflower, spoilers, she's gonna be one of the most important characters we get during this entire playthrough. The thing about Cauliflower is that she's a Dendro character. And Dendro reactions have basically taken over the meta, so they're going to be useful here, right? I didn't automatically level her because she takes Rukashaba mushrooms, and I really didn't want to go to Sumero just to get some mushrooms. Oh yeah, and uh, you should totally subscribe. It would be pretty cool. First was the fight on the Guizhong Ballista, and for some reason I had Faruzan on my team because I forgot to switch her out when I did the Animal Wind Wheel puzzle. Despite that lapse in judgment, I was able to complete the fight very easily. <laughs> And now it's your turn to get launched off the Guizhong Ballista. After this, I decided to finally get the fungi. And as I said while traveling... This team's about to go next level. This challenge is going to go from easy to incredibly easy. So you may have noticed that I've said basically all fights up to this point besides maybe Devalin have been really easy. Yeah, Devalin has been the hardest fight so far. The only problem with me putting a Dendro character on the team is that I'll have to learn the Dendro reactions. I have no built Dendro characters on my main account, so I barely know Dendro reactions. I only know the basics like Bloom, Burning Burgeon, and Hyper Bloom. There's like 8 more reactions on top of that. I also fight the Jade Plume Terror Shroom to get the boss materials necessary to level Cauliflower to level 50. Oh, how useful you've been, Barbara. You are so useful. You used your elemental skill twice. And you're gone from the team. Goodbye, Barbara. <laughs> but I had to decide on the most important thing. What would the name of the team be? This Hyperbloom um, Overload. I gotta write this down somewhere. H for Hyperbloom. O for Overloaded. V for Vaporize. E C for Electrocharge. S for Spread. B for Bloom. Another B for Burgeon. And another B for burning. Is it Hubex? I forgot about Aggravate. After that, we go to sing to some flowers for Vector the Crocodile. <laughs> After that, we fight some Whopper flowers, and they were really easy because of the power of Dendro. We say in out of context sense, I don't care about your PTSD, and then go to fight Chili. The first and second phases were the easiest they've ever been in these challenges, but the third phase I was stupid and relied completely on bloom reactions. I don't know why I did that, but once I stopped being an idiot, the phase was really easy. I don't even need to tell you Osile was easy and that's the end of Act 3. Now we have to get to AR-30 to start the Inazuma prologue quest. All we really have to do are the two mandatory Dainsleep quests. The world quest was overall pretty easy with more Dendro, and Will Be Reunited was for the most part easy except for the last battle, which was the first battle that was actually kind of interesting. No team ever fell or anything, but it required me to get more good, which is more than I can say about the previous hardest fight in this challenge to fall in. But after the quest, we were able to get some wishes. Watch! When was the last time I got a fucking 4 star here? Okay. Who knows, I could soft pity. This game is cruel. Wait, wait. This game is not cruel.
This game is cruel! This seems like a good point to end day 5. Before starting the stream for day 6, I completed the Inazuma Arkham quest off stream because I knew it was going to be really easy. And it was. And I also grinded for my weapons. We started the Inazuma Arkham quest immediately, and the first part of this quest is just a bunch of running around in Rito. The escort mission was another batch of uneventful battles, and now that we've escaped Rito, we go straight to the Pyro Hypostasis to grind the boss for Toma. It took a really long time, but I didn't end up doing it. Back to the Arkham quest. We have to talk to three people who lost their vision, and then break somebody out of jail. Does he look sad? He looks kind of sad. <laughs> All of the Tenryo Commission soldiers in here were really easy, even the big guys. Now we're done with Act 2 and we need to clear Ayaka's and Yoimiya story quests, which don't exist in my eyes. Oh yeah, we can also go to Surumi and get the fun guy. Uh, let's try and do that right now. Well, I guess I'll have to do the Surumi world quest a bit. We can quickly do that and then... Now we can finally get his fun guy, putting Toma on par with the rest of our characters in level finally. At Inazuma Act 2, we have to fight the Bright Shogun, and she was actually kind of annoying. I found my damage to not be too good, and she was hitting us left, right, and center. Maybe this was just because my dodging was bad? Either way, after that, we have to find the Virgin and go to the Resistance Camp. We cleared the archery demonstration with Cauliflower, and then go to the front lines to defeat the Tanryo Commission soldiers, who are all really easy. Now time for Act 3. First we have to clear the Ronin bordering Watatsumi Island, and they were all easy because they were around water. Which let us trigger Bloom. Another goddamn Thomas. Next was the Electro Pillars, and after triggering them a Lava Troll appears. No joke, this was probably my easiest quest fight of the entire challenge. We destroyed him with Dento reactions. Now we have to go to the Delusion Factory and fight a bunch of Fatui soldiers. Surprisingly, this was really easy. Maybe that Raiden mishap was just my bad dodging. The man with multi-personality disorder gives us a flashbang and then we wake up to a- She tells us about our plan to rebel against the Tenryo Commission, but the only thing I'm interested in is meeting the best Inazuma character, Sayu! Before continuing the Archon quest, I continued the grinding for bosses and started more Spiral Abyss. We obviously get wishes from Spiral Abyss, which means... Yes! Oh my god! The luck! As you can tell by my reaction, Tainari was the main thing I wanted on this banner. Tainari though is a good DPS, he can put out good numbers, and is Dendro. I know he's not the best driver for stuff like Hyper Bloom, but he will be acceptable. But sadly this means I'm going to replace Cauliflower. I will never forget her contributions during this playthrough, making so many fights at Breeze just by throwing out a boomerang. But now we're going to make fights at Breeze by sniffing people in the butt. Let's nip that in the butt! We got to AR35 by grinding, so that means we have to do the Ascension Domain. Some of the fights were slow, but not hard by any means, and we were able to take out the Electro Hypostasis Pillars with the dynamic duo of Toma and Tainari. Let us finally continue to the third act of Inazuma by taking out some Tenryo Commission soldiers. And this fight is oddly slow. That's odd. After this we have to fight some Yuara, and oh my god this fight was slow! First off, without a Hyper Bloom, Normal Bloom, or Burgeon, we can deal basically no damage. Secondly, she can slow us down in the first phase with her cryo application. Thirdly, she becomes the tankiest bitch in the second phase. But I did end up doing it, so I guess it wasn't horrible. But next is even worse somehow. Raiden was terrible. The first phase was easy, but the second phase was NOT! We deal basically no damage to her, even with our buffs. And even with healing a bunch of HP, we died a few times. This individual fight took 10 fucking minutes! This is by far the toughest Raiden Shogun has ever been in these challenges. And I know it's 100% because the world level was increased before I fought these two. In all of my other challenges, the world level was either 4 or once was 5, and my characters were on par with the enemy. But even with that excuse, I have no excuse not to grind more after that fight. And grind I did, for weapons, bosses, and some talents. I also made Iron Sting for Singcho. 
After I did enough of that, I did the Chasm World Quest and the Chasm Dainsleaf Quest. Surprisingly, the Geo Bishops in the Chasm World Quest wasn't that bad. The Geo Bishop still gives me flashbacks to Zhangling only and physical damage only, and they're not positive flashbacks. The Dainsleaf Chasm Quest wasn't that bad at all, and the Abyssal enemies weren't too hard. The final Abyss enemy gauntlet at the end only took about 10 minutes, which compared to physical damage only 40 minutes is a lot faster. Either way, we can now start Sumeru. We meet our original Dendro character and go to the Withering Zone. And the one thing I realized was that we have very little HP. Like, below 7k for most characters. The Withering Zone is located inside of a river, so we were able to trigger Bloom and other Hydro-related reactions. The Dream Domain was really easy, and I found Tainari can deal over 1000 with his charge shot at times. Say what you will, but with no artifacts and at AR 36, that is not bad. We go to Sumeru City and get our Akasha Terminal, and then quickly go to Port Ormos to meet the star of Sumeru, Dori. Oh yeah, and I guess there's- Funga, we test our Knowledge Capsule on, are really easy, and so are the Aramites at the dock. Actually, they weren't easy, they were extremely easy. Next was Act 2, which is all a lore on quest with only one instance of combat. And that combat part is easy, so let's just skip to the next part. But before continuing to Act 3, I grinded some more pre gems because we are really close to hitting Pity for Standard Banner. And after a lot of grinding, we finally got our 5 star. Oh! Now a weapon probably would have been better in this situation, but of all characters, Tainari C1 was the one I wanted the most, even if his C1 isn't that good. Now time for Act 3. We emotionally torment a woman and then take her to see... The Doctor! We take out some Aramites right next to Gandarvaville and then go to the desert to take out the Rift Hounds. Our team is basically an elemental reaction team, which means that we completely rely on elemental reaction to deal our damage. The only character who can deal decent physical damage is Razor, and the only person who can deal decent damage without other elements attached to them is Tainari. Next is Act 4. I wish these Aramite battles were more interesting with some of these stronger ones, but they didn't do that, so I guess I'll just continue to cope harder. The hilly trolls at the Elrazar Hospital were easy, and same goes for the Law Drill, because we had a Claymore character and were quickly able to take down the shield. We triggered the Dendro Pillars at the Elrazar Hospital with Tainari, and we were able to progress. The last part of the quest was the King Deshrat Domain, and it was overall pretty easy. Not even the Flying Dendro Fungus was able to stop us. Now it's finally time for Act 5. The Aramite group was really, really easy, and then we go to Party City to fight the Fatui. And this was a lengthy fight. The first two were easy, but the second group had an Electro Hammer guy, which we didn't have Cryo for. It led me to having to extremely slowly take it down, and in the background was the Pyro Gun guy constantly shooting me. After finally defeating him, that wasn't the end because there's another Electro Hammer guy and an agent along with these stupid Animo fungi targeting me. Oh After some more God. plot and- <laughs> It's finally time to do the Deus Foundry. And one of the first enemies we run into is an Electro Hammer guy. Ah! But thankfully the Knights fight was- ah! Thankfully everybody else in the domain wasn't that bad, and we never ran into another- ah! Now it's finally time for the guy with multi-personality disorder. Overall, good luck bear wasn't that hard. Even our Electro moves, which Babaloon resists by quite a lot, did quite a bit of damage against him. In fact, in phase one we didn't even get hit by Sandy. After Scaramouche, it's time for the Boat Domain. The Rift Hounds were easy and barely even hit us, and the Hilly Churls on the boat were easy to take down, and same goes for the Electro Lava Churl. We finish it off with Razor, and that means we beat Genshin Impact without using any artifacts at any point. Tainari, Toma, Razor, and Singcho are absolute legends. That's just poetic. My take on this challenge is that it was nowhere near as hard as I thought it was going to be. Artifacts are key to building a character, but I guess this playthrough taught me that elemental reactions go a long way too. My next challenge will either be my first duo run with Amber and Kale only, or if I get to 10k, Dory only. Because I feel like the three characters I'm the most known for 
are Kokomi, Diluc, and Dory because of how much I like Dory. But until then, I'll leave you guys with that. Oh, <laughs>